Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so we will now discuss uh, with this uh, binding price ceiling and binding price floor, how the market equilibrium price and quantities are determined. Okay. So, let us take an example or diagram. So, suppose first price ceiling, binding type of price ceiling. So, as usual, we are measuring quantity demanded, quantity supplied in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis. This is the demand curve, market demand curve, this is the market supply curve, right. And suppose this is the binding price ceiling P C. Okay. So, as we know that without government intervention free market equilibrium price could be O P star equilibrium price right? and O Q star could be the equilibrium quantity in that market without government intervention. Now, suppose government is setting this O P C. So, O P star is the free market equilibrium price, equilibrium price. O P C is the price ceiling imposed by the government, right. So, what will happen? So, when O P C kind of binding price ceiling is imposed by the government in that market, what will happen? Why the, that will be the equilibrium price? Because look at here, actually uh, free market mechanism, free market force, demand supply force is trying to set the price O P star level. Okay? But government due to government policy, nobody is allowed to charge legally allowed to charge the price above OPC level, right. So, this due to that policy, right, all the customers also know that charging price above OPC level is legally uh, prohibited in that society. So, no customer will be willing to pay more than that. In fact, suppose one seller is setting price little bit above than OPC level. Right. So, uh, customers can report that to the government right, and it will be an illegal or punishable offence. Right. So, all the producers are forced to set the price or, or the sellers, producers, sellers okay, forced to set the price OPC level. Okay. Look, in our past lecture, we told that when government is setting that price ceiling, right some binding price ceiling target is to give some sort of relief to the customer, but what will happen? So, after the imposition of this price ceiling right, because this price is lower than the equilibrium price. So, at the equilibrium price this much of the product can be uh, supplied in the market because that is the supply curve or that is the quantity supplied O Q star is the quantity supplied at, at the price O P star level. right? due to this lower price ceiling lower than OP star level right. Some customers, some sellers are not get enough incentive to deliver that product in the market right. So, as a result at that price only this much say suppose Q C I am telling Q C. So, only O Q C amount of supply of the product or quantity supplied of that product will be there in the market right. So, at O P C level price although this much of quantity demanded is there for the product only this much of quantity supplied is there in the market. So, definitely equilibrium price will be O P C and equilibrium quantity will be O Q C. So, these will be the equilibrium price quantity combination in that market. Okay. So, that is the one side of the story, one sort of implication due to binding price ceiling kind of mechanism or price ceiling kind of government intervention, okay, equilibrium price quantity combinations is changing from the otherwise free market equilibrium price quantity combination. Okay. Okay. Target as we told, as we mentioned that target was that what? 
to give some sort of relief to the customer. But effectively what is happening? Yes, after this kind of price ceiling, the customers who could get the product, right? Because this much of supply only of that product is there. So, only that much of customer will get that product, right? This many customer will be there in the market who are trying to purchase that commodity, but will not be able to get the commodity from the market. So, that much of shortage, shortage will be generated within the market and shortage means what? Shortage means customers are willing to get the product, but they are not getting the product. Although the price ceiling mechanism is to give some sort of relief to benefit the customers as a group. Right? So, this kind of policies of government intervention also target group is the customers, a section of the customers will, will not get benefited at all in the sense that they will not get the product at all. At least if this kind of uh, restriction was, uh, was not there in the market, this many additional customers can get the product. Right? So, even those customers are also not getting that product which they are willing to purchase. Okay. So, so that, 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 that's the thing. That's the thing that due to this kind of uh, price ceiling mechanism, okay, and when this kind of price ceiling mechanism is there, you know, you see that some other kind of activities can appear in the market. What kind of activities? Some sort of rationing, some sort of rationing by the sellers will arise in the market. How? Because sellers know that they cannot charge any price above this level, OPC level. Okay? They have to charge that price. And they also realize that that price, how much we can deliver in the market, okay? how much we can supply in the market, whole lot of customers are there more than that. Right? Look at here, this green, green uh, Okay, this, this many customers are there or potential customers are there who are uh, trying to get that commodity from the market, but only this much of this much of supply is there in the market. right? So, that this phenomenon everybody knows, sellers know. Then seller has to or uh, seller may come up with some sort of rationing mechanism. What are those rationing mechanism? Seller may try to discriminate. Okay. So, I am a seller. No, I will give only uh, to my known people okay. and who other, other customers are coming, I will tell them no, no more product is there, no more stock is there in my store. Okay. I am giving to my friend, my family members, my known uh, people and all. Okay. It, it should be a, this kind of discrimination can come. What else can happen? Say some sort of long queue can happen. Right? So, say uh, voluntary production cut. Uh, oil production card by OPEC, we have discussed in our past lecture, right? Sometimes back. Okay. So, suppose initially before that OPEC's decision to cut the voluntarily the price, so suppose this was the demand supply situation, this was the demand curve, this was the supply curve, okay. And suppose So, this was the price ceiling by the government say in a country, okay, price ceiling. So, uh, since this is the price ceiling and which is above the equilibrium price level, so OP star, okay, there is, uh, so equilibrium price was in that market is OP star only, okay, and at that price the number of amount of quantity demanded and am amount of quantity supplied was exactly matching. Okay. So, although there is a price ceiling mechanism by the government in the market, it was non-binding and it was not having any implication over the equilibrium price. Now, suppose after when OPEC uh, voluntarily cut their production of the uh, oil, right? so say suppose supply curve becomes this, because we know that due to that things, uh, each of the OPEC members are voluntarily cutting, cutting their production. Right? So, total amount of oil production worldwide will be less. So, as a result supply will be small or less. So, supply car may say shift from S to S1. Okay? So, what will happen? Now, the whatever the price ceiling mechanism was there in place, right? although it was non-binding earlier, after the supply shortage it becomes binding, because after the supply car shift this is the equilibrium price. right? 
this is the equilibrium price. So, this price ceiling is now becoming a binding price ceiling. So, as a result binding price ceiling means what? Because this much of price ceiling is there. So, nobody is allowed to sell that product above that price level. So, suppose this is the PC, no? that is the PC level, OPC, nobody, nobody is allowed to sell that product in the market above the price OPC level. Right. So, at that OPC level, this much of demand is there because this is the demand curve, but only this much of supply of the product is there because that is the coming from the supply curve. Right. So, this much of shortage will be there exactly the thing what we are discussing here in this diagram. Right. So, what happened no that time when it is in, uh, in uh, this kind of phenomena arises in the US market when OPEC introduced that voluntarily uh, supply constraint kind of restrictions right. Uh, global supply of the oil product or gasoline ok, it is uh, it, reduced um, significant amount ok. And immediately what happened in the US market no, it is a long queue before the oil stations ok, petrol pumps and all gasoline stations ok. So, long queue is another mechanism. So, this when we are telling that uh, suppliers sellers can come with some kind of rationing mechanism right. One side of this story is that the customers can have to wait in a long queue to get the product. Sellers can uh, do preferential treatment through which we are telling that discrimination ok discrimination certain people we are giving certain people we are intentionally telling that no there is no stock like that right. So, all kinds of this kinds of not only that some illegal transaction may happen one customer is waiting no that customer knows that this is the uh, legally legal price level is OPC ok, but he is silently or whisperingly tell the uh, seller that see I will give you little bit more you give the uh, price. So, that little bit more behind the bar or behind the curtain we are we are trying to give means what? We are encouraging or the system is encouraging uh, people to in involve into illegal transactions right, because that is any price above that level is legally punishable. So, we are telling that that is illegal transaction. So, this kind of uh, binding price uh, price ceiling kind of restrictions right may create uh, lot of lot of inconvenience within the society ok, when the people are waiting or customers are waiting in the queue a lot of timing of states no, time is precious everybody has some uh, productive time they can utilize that time in some production activity. So, that economy can uh, be able to produce more goods and services right that uh, precious time is wasted they are wasting that time just standing in the long queue right. Uh, it is creating it is creating you know, inconvenience to a section of the people, but not on, not only the inconvenience it is it is a loss to the society ultimately right, because uh, producible resources is getting wasted ok. So, that is the thing. Uh, so, so, what we have discussed through price ceiling mechanism although government's target is to uh, get some sort of relief or give some sort of relief provide some sort of relief to the customers. Uh, group ok, first a section of the customers will will not be able to purchase the product at all at the new price because there is there will be shortage ok at the at the equilibrium price level ok that is the one side of the story. Another side of the story is that uh, even if the people who are getting uh, the product uh, at that uh, ceiling price level right, they may have to, uh, to face uh, a lot of inconvenience like waiting in a queue and so on right. So, exactly the same thing uh, if there is a there is a uh, binding price floor. So, that how that is say suppose price floor as we told that that is the legally lower bound or legally minimum uh, level of price at which uh, people should. Uh, transact that commodity into the in the market right. So, anybody is allowed to transact that commodity in, in, up in that price above because that is floor. So, above that price level. So, as usual let us draw, discuss that using a diagram quantity demanded quantity supplied in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and suppose this is the demand curve and suppose this is the supply curve. 
okay. and suppose this is the price floor say this blue line is the price floor. Okay. Price floor O P F price floor. So, as we already clarified price floor is basically is to give some sort of relief to the seller side little bit more price so that customer um, producers can get right. Uh, in India no uh, MSP of the agricultural products minimum support prices MSP I am sure all of you know about this term, term MSP minimum support price for certain agricultural products it is there no in India. So, that MSP is basically some sort of price floor ok. So, agricultural product we are telling so farmers who are producing those commodities right because during the harvesting time no lot of products lot of all the farmers know who, who produce that product they are harvesting right. So, uh, lot of supply of the product will be there in the market ok. So, since supply is used it may have a tendency that price will come down ok and as a result uh, income of the farmers can go down ok. So, to save the farmers from that or to give the some sort of relief to the farmers ok, government impose certain sort of MSP minimum support price. So, minimum support price means what nobody is allowed to uh, transact that commodity below that price ok. So, like that kind of price is this OPF right. So, price floor OPF kind of binding price floor is basically. So, what will be the implication if that kind of so, what I am telling MSP what is available in Indian market for the agricultural products that is nothing but one sort of price floor mechanism more specifically binding price floor mechanism ok. So, if that is the case without that price floor uh, what could be the equilibrium price? Equilibrium price could be O P star amount right O P star amount ok and that much of commodity can be transacted O Q star amount of the commodity can be transacted each unit at the price O P star ok. Now, if this is the price floor binding price floor is set by the government. So, what will happen at that price look at here although since it is more than the equilibrium price no lot of sellers lot of producers will be incentivized to deliver that product in the market. So, they are supplying in the market as a result this much of quantity supplied at that price is available in the market right. But since price is huge right. So, customers are only willing to purchase that much product because only that much of customers are there in the market who can tolerate this OPF kind of price level ok. So, obviously this will be the equilibrium price. So, uh, without price floor or without government intervention is in this kind of market OP star free market equilibrium as we wrote out earlier free market equilibrium free market equilibrium price and O Q star could be that free market equilibrium quantity ok. But after this kind of O P F price floor this will be the uh, equilibrium price after the government intervention government intervention and definitely O Q F will be the equilibrium quantity. Why that is the equilibrium quantity although although O Q F 1 or F prime O Q F prime this is the quantity supplied by the sellers ok by the by the producers by the potential sellers, but O Q F only the quantity demanded by the customers because uh, as we told since price is little bit above that the equilibrium price ok. So, as price is more and more ok what will happen less 
and less number of customers can tolerate that price right. So, less amount of customers are there that amount is OQF. So, although huge amount of supply is there not enough number of buyers are there to buy that product in the market. So, as a result this much of surplus of the product will be there surplus ok. So, surplus means what? Surplus means commodity is there or potential sellers, producers, they brought their product in the market, but nobody is there, no customer they get. As we told that price floor mechanism or more specifically that binding kind of price floor mechanism is to give some sort of relief to the supply side, supplier side, seller side, right. But look at here after that binding price floor mechanism implemented in that society in that market what is happening this much of this much of quantity no only will be sold in the market that is the equilibrium quantity the sellers who are able to sell their product they are getting high price that opf amount of price but whole lot of seller will not be able to sell their product at all in the market. So, yes the target group is the seller class, but a section of the seller class will be get benefited, will get benefited. They will get higher price or that PF amount of OPF amount of price, MSP kind of price what government said. But whole lot of sellers will be there who will not be able to sell their product in the market at all because there is no customers for their product at that price. So, again what will happen perhaps the kind of rationing mechanism kind of illegal kind of things transactions and all those things will be there may be there in the market. What kind of illegal activity here can happen ok. So, seller actually uh, nobody is allowed to transact that market neither uh, nobody is allowed to transact and that product in the market at a price which is lower than OPF level right. But sellers also although they know that that is the thing, but they will perhaps approach to the customers that please I, I am giving little bit discount to you uh, please uh, purchase that right. Because otherwise their product is not sold at all whole lot of customers this many customers are there right. Look at here this many customers are there who are willing to sell their product in the market, but they are not getting their uh, customers this many sellers, this many sellers are there who are willing to sell their product in the market, but they are not finding any customers for their product in the market right. So, they can they can compromise a bit right now ok I, I am I am cutting down my product little bit uh, price little bit please purchase this although that is legally prohibited from the government right. So, this price flow price selling mechanism uh, what we, we discuss here first uh, what are those mechanism? Let me let me uh, summarize. Price ceiling means we are setting some legally upper limit of the price within that society. Price floor government is setting or we are setting or the society is setting that some legally lower limit of the price okay, of that commodity in that market. Okay. Now, uh, this price flow price ceiling effectively can be of two types each of them uh, can be of two types binding and non binding ok. Binding means what when this kind of price flow or price ceiling has some implication over the equilibrium mark equilibrium price quantity ok. Implication by implication what we are telling effective implication means basically without that price flow or price ceiling whatever equilibrium price quantity can be there in the market with that imposition of the price floor or price ceiling equilibrium quant price quantity combination will uh, will differ ok. In that way it is called effective implication right. So, bind binding price floor or binding price ceiling will have some effective implication on market equal outcome ok that we have discussed and uh, at the end we told that although when government is setting price floor target is to get little bit or give little bit benefit to the seller side when government is setting alternatively price ceiling target is to give little bit benefit to the buyer side. Yes, a section of the sellers or a section of the buyers uh, on a totality a section of the target community will get benefit no doubt about that, but another section of that target community 
uh, will not get at all benefit because uh, in the price ceiling case lot of uh, customers will be there potential customers will be there who will not be able to purchase the commodity at all from the market because not enough supply of the commodity will be there in the market in the price floor situation okay there will be whole lot of uh, producers of the product who are willing to sell their product but will not be able to find the customers for their product okay so they will lose the market so, these are the things uh, through quantity restriction, through uh, quantitative restriction on price, okay, how government can or any policy making or any uh, decision making authority within a society, how they can intervene into the market. Now, the other way we will discuss how through taxation mechanism, the other way government can intervene into the market. As we discuss that what is the tax, tax let us let us go to a new page. Okay. So, tax is basically government. So, uh, there are lot of different types of tax. Say suppose per unit transaction of the commodity say certain amount of money is taxed. Okay. Similarly, say uh, certain percentage of say uh, price is say 10 rupee. 10 percent on that price will be the tax okay that is sometimes called uh, ad valorem tax okay tax on the value of the product market value is basically price of any any products market value is the price so price is 10 rupee so 10 percent on that will be the tax okay so there are lot of different types of uh, taxes are there in economics uh, some are referred as quantity tax means per unit transaction of the co product some tax amount is there, ad valorem tax okay. uh, on, the, on the price of the product some tax is there, when that tax is imposed no it, it may be percentage of something right. So, in this course in, in our discussion in this syllabus of this course we will discuss all, only quantity tax. Okay. So, suppose government is going to impose some sort of tax, okay. tax per unit of the that commodity which is under the taxation. Okay. So, if government imposes the tax on a commodity, right, how that can influence the market outcome, right. So, without taxation, suppose as usual, we are measuring quantity demanded, quantity supplied in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis, and suppose this is the demand curve. Okay this is the supply curve okay. and suppose government is going to impose some tax on that product for which this is the market and for which this is the demand curve, this is the supply curve we have drawn here. right? And that tax is suppose say some amount say, say rupees T per unit of that product that much of the tax government is going to impose. Okay. How it will influence the market equilibrium? To understand that, we have to first understand say tax on whom, because in this market two group of people are there, sellers and customers. So, first question is tax is on whom, okay. tax may be on the customers, tax may be on the sellers. right? So, if we understand the, we, if we have the answer to this question, right? Then the question is how much tax is there? Okay. How much tax? How much is the tax like this rupees T per unit like that? When we get these two answers, right, then it is very easy to understand what kind of implication will be there in the market. Look, so suppose first question this is the demand supply curve, and if government uh, without any tax intervention or without any intervention by the government in this market through this tax taxation mechanism right what will be equilibrium price and what will be equilibrium quantity we all know this will be say this will be equilibrium price and this will be equilibrium quantity right now suppose government is going to impose this tax on the sellers tax on suppliers so if suppliers are taxed by certain unit of say rupees t per unit right. 
So, supply curve will shift leftward say suppose this supply curve will move from S 2 S 1 position. Why supply curve will move to leftward? Because look let us try to understand in this way when there was no tax ok some of the suppliers say this is the market supply curve right that market supply curve is coming through the supply behavior of all the sellers in the market, all the suppliers in the market, all the potential sellers in the market, right. So, suppose the seller who is who is here as per his or her cost of production, he will be happy if market price is this much. So, this much price is enough for him to be able to deliver the product in the market. This is the person who is standing here, seller who is person. So, he, his minimum acceptable price is this much right, this should be the price uh, at which he will be able to supply, if price is above that it is he will be happy only right, but at least minimum this much of price he needs right. So, now the question is without government imposition of the tax, this price is the minimum price the person who is standing here, the seller who is standing here he needs to be able to deliver that product in the market. Now, beyond that and that that price was coming from solely on the basis of the cost of production what he or she was facing right. Now, he knows that over and above that cost of production he has to pay this much of tax per unit to the government. So, definitely his cost of production has increased right, per unit that much amount right. So, as a result effective price now he needs this much to be able to deliver that product. So, definitely we are getting a sense that the supply curve will move from S to S prime S 1 and that movement is basically vertical distance between this S and S 1, vertical distance between S and S 1 perhaps this is basically rupees T that is the tax amount. Let me repeat, if government impose the tax on the sellers, okay, sellers effective cost of production will increase, Effect by effective cost of production what we are referring, without tax some cost of production was there which sellers were incurring earlier. Now, they have to face the cost of production exactly this much will increase, tax amount will increase. Suppose earlier cost of production without tax per unit cost of production was say 10 rupee. Now, suppose 2 rupee per unit is the tax by the government. So, the person who are facing earlier 10 rupee cost of production effectively he or she will face now cost of production per unit 10 plus 2 rupee. Because 10 rupee in any case he, he has to face the cost of production to hire that factors of production and beyond that 2 rupee he has to give to the government if he wants to supply that product in the market and that 2 rupee per unit right. So, now effective cost will be 12 rupee. So, earlier if with the profit margin if he was happy to get the 11 rupee as the price to be able to deliver the product in the market okay, because 10 rupee is the cost of production and 1 rupee is the profit margin. Okay. Now, he has to get the 13 rupee right if he wants to keep still 1 rupee profit margin because that now, effective cost is basically 10 plus 2 12 rupee and he wants to keep 1 rupee uh, per unit as the profit margin. So, it will be 13 rupee. So, as a result effectively, so, so we claim that if the tax is imposed on the sellers, supply curve will move upward or move leftward. Sometimes we tell upward because supply curve is going this side, sometimes we tell leftward also it is moving that way right. So, leftward or upward right, but why it will shift leftward or upward this is the mechanism because effective cost of production is going to increase to the sellers. Exactly the same way if government imposes tax on the buyers demand curve will shift leftward ok. So, let us stop today here and we will discuss in our next lecture when government is going to impose some tax, quantity tax only, tax on the buyers, how demand curve will shift and how we can understand that shifting. Okay? And then we will discuss that, once we know that how supply curve will shift or demand curve will shift, 
V sub is the other. See, look at here in this particular case when supply curve is shifting leftward from S to S prime or S to S1, demand curve is not shifting at all because producers or customers are not taxed at all. Tax is imposed only on the sellers, that is why supply curves are moving. So, under the settlement previous condition, demand curve will not shift. So, without shifting the demand curve, if uh, without any change in the demand curve, if supply curve moves from one place to the another, what kind of equilibrium or what kind of implication will, will be there on the equilibrium price quantity combination that we all know. So, that we will discuss in our uh, next set of lectures. First, we will discuss when demand curve will shift and then we will discuss what kind of equilibrium or implication on the equilibrium will be there. Okay? Let us stop here today.